filmmakers with phone box, director Alan Powell and screenwriter Angelo Enzi. And with Out of Reach, Rain Night, director Pablo Dardinez, and editor Eric Pares. <laughs> editor and all kinds of other things, too. <laughs> Thank you guys both so much for bringing your wonderful films here. Really appreciate it. Uh, do we have any questions, comments? Oh, come on, there's got to be a few. Yes, up here. Is the phone booth becoming an, an icon? <laughs> Sorry, what was, the, what was the question? Is the phone booth becoming an icon? It, it is an icon, it's, uh, and it's slowly disappearing in, in, in London, England. They're being recycled or just being taken away altogether. And recycled by, I mean, uh, some are ATM machines now. Um, some are used as urinals. Actually, all of them are used as urinals. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I, ever since I've made the film, I'm now fascinated by phone boxes. In fact, did you have it with you? Uh, it's gone. Okay. <coughs> I'm just going to bring little phone boxes to everybody. <laughs> In the age of cell phones, really, you know, they disappear. Yeah. Has anybody here used a payphone in the last five years? <laughs> One, oh, a few people. Okay. Okay. When I read the film description, I thought it, I was hoping it would be the film, the poem that they used in Pittsburgh Park. They were close. They looked like it. Howard Towers. Howard Towers. Howard Towers. Howard Towers. Can't talk. I've had too many beers and I'm still jet lagged. <laughs> Tower Hamlets. Oh. Oh, we have one of those in one red poem with a commercial drive. Uh, I was told. I want to take a picture of a phone booth or phone box here in Vancouver and post it on the uh, on my phone box page on Facebook. <laughs> that would be the one to do. Yeah? yeah I, just, I don't know if I'll be able to get there. Anybody, if anybody else can do it, please post uh, I'll it. I'll do it for you. Um, I'll it. Oh, good. Yeah, so yeah, it's Angelo. Yeah. Angelo can do it for you. Facebook, phone box Facebook page. Uh, I'm going to ask Angelo a question. Uh, writing the script for that must have been a little tricky because you're not, the characters aren't really going anywhere beyond those little seeds. Tell us about that challenge. Yeah, it was a real challenge to try and give the characters an arc um, and to try and create a story that would have some resolution. <clears throat> and that's something we were um, very aware of right from the beginning. I wrote the film as a, as a spec just on my own. Um, inspired by a New York Times article in two, 2010, I think, um, where this reporter just sat outside a phone booth in Queens and just interviewed, tried to interview everybody who used it. And the stories were fascinating, invariably. They were some, some desperate situation, right? And the article actually resolves on uh, this man uh, who keeps coming back to the phone booth every couple of hours because his first grandson is inevitably born by the end of the article. And so that was, that was the story I, I followed. I thought it was fascinating. Um, so this reporter just kept seeing the same man coming back to the phone booth every couple of hours, putting in his quarter, and calling his uh, daughter, and, or his son, to see if his daughter-in-law had had the baby yet. And so that, that became the, um, genesis. the genesis of the arc that we wanted to tell with, with uh, Sylvia's story. So, yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> there we go. Judy. Judy, okay. <laughs> oh, come on. There's got to be a few comments at least. Up here. Yes, please. I just have a question uh, for the other team. Yes. Uh, what inspired them to make their film? I found it very beautiful to watch. Uh, well, actually, um, it's all adaptation of poems. In fact, um, it's a whole series of short films. Uh, once you put them all together, it makes a whole feature. And uh, this uh, text is, um, in fact, the last, uh, obviously, a poem of all the series, uh, because it's the only one uh, from the writer, which uh, he didn't really write himself. He just took the, uh, a phone uh, transmission or a phone message 
and gave him the title and then that was um, uh, very interesting to, to work with because uh, uh, it's about in communication, in the whole communication age and uh, in fact uh, for us to create a whole story around that uh, po poem uh, was uh, very interesting because uh, he just took the text and then he said okay this text I'm gonna turn it into a poem and then we just took that and said okay this poem we're gonna turn it into a movie uh, <laughs> so that I don't know if that really answers uh, but of course uh, the whole atmosphere has um, lots to do with what the whole story is is about which now you just got kind of a slice of it um, one more question how would you describe the main character the, well, the main character is a, is a poet, and uh, he's uh, uh, in kind of a spiral down uh, of um, uh, in his life, indeed. So when the, uh, when we heard it was going to be a life crisis, like okay, well, it's uh, pretty appropriate, and uh, he's uh, just uh, trying to deal with uh, with his own personal trauma, and uh, at this uh, moment, he's just trying to reach out. For, for this girl he's still in love of and uh, he's uh, trying to cope with some guilt uh, feelings. But it's, uh, if I would have to describe it, the poet, it's uh, a bit of an uh, anti-hero, would you say? <laughs> and um, it's kind of the classic uh, tormented uh, romantic poet, uh, like also from Werther or Goethe, or it's uh, in, in a whole classic uh, tradition of uh, in action hero in a way, yeah, because he didn't do much, uh, in the film, as you can see. Can you tell us uh, anything about the techniques you're using for that super impression and wonderful? Yes, wonderful technique. Uh, yeah, it's um, well, it's um, a whole blend of painting and animation. I, I just go through the through the screen. Um, let's say that. Uh, when you make a, a movie, and I think um, ever since uh, Lumiere Brothers, when they, they got the, the projector uh, and camera to ask the, the, the cinematographer, uh, we all, always watch movies as from a camera viewfinder. And you have this convention that the space of the screen is a camera. And then you just have to, to create an immersion there. And for us, the starting point is we have, uh, it's like in painting, or it's like in design. We have a space, and we decide how we're gonna fill it. So, um, of course, uh, that's kind of a, a design process or, or a painting process. And you cannot have that independently from, from what the whole storytelling uh, is about, which is more about rhythm and, uh, and the whole convention of, uh, of language uh, that you have in cinema. And so uh, we actually kind of work uh, in parallel in two ways. There's a kind of a, a first uh, skeleton of uh, the movie, which just uses a one image only uh, edit. And once, um, once Eric mainly <laughs> is, uh, is happy with the rhythm and uh, well, we're both happy with the atmosphere and so on, we decide, we decompose that and we decide, okay, but this image, how are we just really going to integrate it in this space? We just take it as one element, even if it's the main one, but uh, we just take back the, the, the white space as a starting point. It's really, it's really a constructing from, like from one element and then adding more and more, sorry, and then adding Within the, the, the original edit or the rough edit, you start with one image, but then have uh, two or three minutes preparing. That then goes into uh, After Effects, and uh, basically we, we, how would you say, keep uh, blending and adding until you get something that looks like one image. Something. And do you work out each layer kind of independently before you compose all of them together? Yeah, as well. Yeah, 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 of course. I mean, it, it can get uh, a bit crazy. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, I think, I mean, of course, uh, you have very sophisticated tools now to create special effects, um, but all the same, well, I don't know how other people work, but uh, when suddenly for one frame you have like hundreds of layers with the little elements, uh, then 
uh, computers start uh, going crazy. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Yes, I'm just curious if any of you have a favorite short from the set and you want to anything that, that you really like and want to share why. I really like Phone Box because I directed it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, from all the other ones, I really liked Phone Box also, I have to say. I really liked Phone Box and I liked, I actually don't remember the title of the one with uh, Uganda. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, they came at night. They came at night, exactly. Yeah. Um, that really nailed me to my seat, yeah. I also liked They Came at Night. Um, it just uh, took me to a completely different place than I've ever been before. So it uh, really, it was an immersion in a different world. Yeah, it's too bad the uh, producer, Lindsay, and the director, Andrew, were supposed to come here, but uh, they just, I, I'm not sure what happened, but uh, they unfortunately had to cancel just like two days ago. So it's really too bad that they weren't here to share their movie with you. Uh, I found it like probably about the most powerful and beautifully made message film I've ever seen. It's, it's really amazing for, for what it was constructed as, as a very specific purpose. Uh, I just thought the filmmaking is fantastic. Yeah, it really is. It, it, it's really powerful. And, and they're all amateur actors, too. That's, ama that's really amazing that he got such great performances out of these people who have never been in front of a camera before. That's like, wow. Up here. Uh, about phone bars. Well, and I've been working together for a number of years on a, on a feature film and some other projects that we've been doing. And I don't really know where the collaboration on this film started. I wrote it and sent it to him probably, you know, three or four years ago. And just this last year, he was in London and uh, had some time on his hands. And he said, have you, do you have anything <laughs> that we haven't done? And I said, well, yeah, I have this thing. And he had read it years ago. And so he already knew the story. So it's hard to tell. We do have a great collaboration, and it's hard to tell where something begins and something ends. Um, it's pretty seamless. Um, yeah, I, I, um, I recall. I recall it differently. Um, I had an idea about a story about a phone box, a phone booth, and I think at the same time you had just you had read something. So. We were sort of along the same lines, thinking uh, uh, the same idea. The synchronicity was yeah, happening. Yeah. And that was like five years ago, I think, or four years ago. And so you just went and wrote, wrote it, and it was great. And, and then other things <laughs> happened, and we just put it on the shelf. Yeah, it was on the shelf for three years or so. And then at this, and I, I moved to London, England, and I had to do something. And I pulled out that phone box. And then we did two or three days of rewrites just very quickly and uh, came up with the shooting draft and he shot it that weekend. It was like really quickly. It just made more sense to do it in London too because it's a phone box. It just sort of so much more texture to this box. This, this, this life, this world. It wouldn't look the same in the... Um, well, I just the history of a, a phone box in London as opposed to, yeah. you know... Yeah, it's more iconic than Absolutely. our phone booths, I would say. Absolutely. Does that answer your question? Yeah, way up here? Yeah. So that letter to Annabelle, I was, it was a bit tricky. I was trying to figure out the uh, the setting or the societal environment that you guys had imagined. Like, it, can you tell me a little bit more about that? Uh, I didn't make the film, uh, although the film was made by two alumni of VIF, or was produced by two alumni of VIF, who actually met here a couple of years ago, uh, three years ago when they showed their films here. Uh, they produced this film uh, through the uh, Queensland Film and Television School and uh, where they're now teaching, and, uh, or at least one of them is teaching, Jeff is teaching there, Scott is not, Scott's still actually making films. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, where is it set? I don't know, somewhere in, the, in some dystopian future. You know, that's really about all I can tell you. It's, uh, it, it creates a wonderful little world inside that house, you know, and, and, and inside his mind, really, because he's really, it's, it's so much of it is flashbacks uh, back to the world he's remembering and, and you know, in, in a way, deny, for two years, he's kind of denying the, the, what's really happened to her. That's, that's about as best as I can explain to you. So we're supposed to be confused then. 
Somewhat, I think. I, I think so. <laughs> Here, yes, please. I found some parts of phone box very funny. Um, but you mentioned something about a New York phone box, and I was wondering if it was written specifically for British actors, and it wasn't how much interpretation you allow them. Uh, good question. I wrote it uh, hoping he would shoot it in Toronto, and um, <laughs> he moved to London. And so when he called me, I said, Well, what do I do? Do I just leave it to the actors? And he said, well, try it, you know, try and uh, UKize it. <laughs> and I don't know if that's what he said, something to that effect. And so I uh, went on Google and I looked up uh, British slang. <laughs> and I just started peppering it throughout and just, just as a way to give the British actors little uh, cues, I guess. Um, but I don't think we changed the dialogue that much, but we, I did add um, some British slang. <laughs> and the actors did the rest, and I think the acting was outstanding. Anyone else? Well, I think they're cutting us out here because of time. They need to get the next show in, too. So I'm going to thank you both, yeah. you all again, so much for being here. Thank you for your wonderful films. Thank you all for being here. Hope to see you. Uh, we'll be repeating uh, some of the, all of the programs next week during the afternoon. If you haven't seen some of the other ones, you can come then if you've got time on your hands. Hope to see you. Thanks.